What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Roundhouse Radio. Today, we are back with the Just How Good Is boxing series that we've been doing. We're slowly working our way through all of the athletes, I guess you could say, <laughs> that have been boxing for us, all the social media stars that have been boxing for us. And I've been waiting to do this one for a while because I, I'm a big fan of Big Gibber and Nissan Gibb, and we're gonna go over just how good he is at boxing, man. Just how developed this kid has become in the sport of boxing. We're obviously gonna go over his last fight, right? I'm not gonna analyze his fight from three years ago or two years ago, whatever it is, and judge his boxing because he's made leaps and bounds. And this fight was great because he fought a guy that was the same size as him. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, Taylor Holder was lighter, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a, a clearly they're a similar size, right? Weight doesn't necessarily translate exactly into size. Some guys will be a lot bigger and sort of within the same weight category than their opponents. And I think that even though Gibb weighed a bit more than Taylor Holder here, they're about the same size. It was a good matchup, a good even fight based on experience as well, or at least based on the experience that Taylor Holder was pretending he had. So let's dive right into it. And Gibb came out right away with the pressure right so he's instantly pressuring but something he does differently here is he's not just in range of his opponent right so unlike when he was fighting Jake Paul and the first time he just sort of went into Jake Paul's range but not into his own range and he just kind of stayed there what, what he's doing here that's different is he's within his own range and he's very aware of his defensive responsibility while applying that pressure and you can see it right from the start where he throws a couple jabs and he slips Taylor's jab while throwing his own jab, right? So he moves his head off the center line, watch. See how he's moving his head off the center line and then you can see it really good here when Taylor throws out a punch. There, he, he, he slips off the jab there. And right away, he, he identifies that Taylor's got that high guard and he throws a body shot, right? So the high guard's great, it works well. Taylor's obviously trying to be comfortable in his high guard and protect himself, but if you're just gonna open yourself up to body shots and not protect the body, and your opponent starts taking advantage of that, well, you're gonna get cracked. And that's exactly what happens in this fight. That's how Gibb wins this fight, is he throws body shots. Right, you see that? So he throws a four punch combination. None of the punches at the start of the combination land. It's the it's the three and four punch that land. Watch. Those punches blocked, but those body shots both land. So that's great, guys. That's, that's what you wanna see. You wanna see guys able to throw those shots that are like long combinations and not just the one or the two shots that are gonna get blocked. Right there, he does it again, right? Where he throws the three and then it's the fourth punch that lands. And this is where Taylor, you know, his inexperience is starting to show. Sure, Taylor moves pretty, but realistically, his actual boxing IQ and his fight IQ just wasn't there here, right? His movement and his athletic ability and his boxing fundamentals and his understanding of how to box was sort of there. It was his fight IQ that wasn't there in this fight. Gibbs constantly fainting. You know, that's a really sloppy body punch. So let's go over there, watch. He throws the double jab. It's a really sloppy body punch. He's, he's overextended with the punch. He's sort of slapping along the side of the body. It's not really driving and throwing that hook in. So, I mean, ideally he would have a better punch there, but it's the right idea. Bouncing in and out, he sort of got rid of that stupid crab stuff he was doing before, moves back and, and you know, I wish he would have more head movement right now because it seems like his head movement isn't working as well as it was before. He's getting clipped with those shots and he only moves backwards, right? So right here, you can see that Taylor Holder is throwing straight punches and instead of, instead of moving off the center line and maybe, you know, pivoting or something like that or using his footwork, he just moves backwards or forwards, right? So that's something he could do better is create angles. Right now, he's just moving forward or backward, but I mean, it's working right so it's kind of if it ain't broke don't don't fix it right but right so the the triple jab right and taylor's blocking all those but he's not doing anything and then he gets the fourth punch in and that that shot lands gets himself into a bit of a brawl there but overall first round good round for gib i don't know how you would really score that for taylor right like how are you going to score that for taylor this is where Taylor starts throwing those straight punches and see what I mean how, because he's just moving straight backwards instead of moving off the center line, he actually gets clipped with those straight punches. So if we look closely here, you can see that he actually does get clipped a little bit by these straight shots just because of how he's moving only straight back. And you know, I will say that Gibb, one of his one of his issues is his guard isn't good, right? So his hands are very loose and they're not really, he's not really good at keeping them in the right position. He sort of throws his arms out to try to deflect the shots coming towards him instead of relying on a good guard and his positioning is good and his pressure gives him a little bit of defense but realistically his his actual guard and his ability to deflect shots isn't isn't very good he could do a lot better there 
see how he's not in Taylor's range right now. And when he enters the range, he's a bit more aware of it though, right? So that's something that he wasn't doing before where he would just sort of get in range and get himself hurt. Whereas now he's more aware of when he's in range and when he's out of range. If you watch back in my old videos where I was breaking down his boxing ability, that was a big thing that I said about his his necessity to win this fight was he has to know his range better. And he absolutely did know his range better in this fight. We're gonna skip through it. We, we know it goes all five rounds, right? So let's skip to the third round here. And this is where Taylor's fallen apart, right? You see that horrible combination he throws right there. Like, what is this? What is this combination from Taylor? <laughs> like, like, what is that? Like, absolutely nothing there because the pressure of Gibbs gotten to him because Gibbs doing what I was saying there where he's either out of range or in range, right? Again, there with his lack of guard, though, he gets clipped. And, and that's why I think if Gibb doesn't fix that guard and doesn't fix his ability to not get hit, you know, the pressure that he puts on is, is going to wear negatively to him, right? Because if a guy th that had power fought him, like Jake Paul or someone that was a bit bigger, unlike Taylor Holder, he would have been hurt here a couple times, I think. But as we see, you know, Taylor Holder kind of gassed out really quickly. He, the snap and power of his punches went away really quickly. So Gibb didn't have much to worry about, right? because the pressure sapped him of his energy. But against the more powerful guys, the, the, these shots that Gibb eats, he wouldn't have been able to eat. But this being said, man, like these guys could fight 10 times and Gibb wins this fight 10 times. Taylor Holder just does not have the gas tank or power to beat to beat Gibb, he just doesn't. And with smaller gloves, yeah, absolutely. Gibb, Gibb, these body shots would have hurt him even more. You know, there, there's a good example though, right? So Gibb has a good ability to block looping punches. And I think that's one of the reasons that he was able to win convincingly. And you see it as the fight goes on, Taylor Holder will start looping more punches and Gibb has a good ability to block those looping punches. Watch, see how he, he blocks that hand right there? You saw that? And then he parries that jab but it's the straight punches that he's unable to deal with because he's more of a brawler, right? So he's used to shots coming in on his side and he blocks like that, but it's the straight punches because his arms are out here, the straight punches come through and they hit him. So that's something I would like to see from him to do a bit better, but overall he does great in this fight, right? See, he does it again there where Taylor throws a big looping shot and he just blocks it. And like, he swings, he swings massive looping punches every time. Guys like me with torn labrums, we don't throw those looping punches. So, you know, it's straight punches that win fights. I've said it before. And, and he does great here, right? And, and he's making the read that these looping punches are landing and they're comfortable for him to throw. So I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying straight punches, if you want to level up in the long term, are going to be better for you. So now we're in the fifth round. And what's crazy is look at his pressure, man. The guy has infinite gas tank. It's like he could go forever. I honestly don't understand how he does that. But shout out to him. He, he's got that gas tank. And he's now he's going for the KO, right? He really wants to get the knockdown. I think he kind of knew that he was probably going to win at this point. But he still just wanted something emphatic, something that was going to trend on social media, et cetera, et cetera, right? So he was going for that knockout, throwing, going for those big shots. And look at it. You know, he's moving constantly, which is great, right? He's got constant feints coming out. He's throwing jabs that he knows aren't going to land. And then he throws his combination, right? So he's constantly keeping Taylor mentally stimulated, right? Which is exhausting. And a guy like Taylor really showed that he exhausted quickly. And I think a lot of it wasn't necessarily being defensive. I thought, I think a lot of it was the body shots and the constant fainting that Anision Gibb did, right? So it's that constant movement and constant body shots. You saw him right there, right? Three body shots landing, right? Big, big shots. And Taylor's not able to block all these because when he's going low, he has to be aware of those body shots. He has to try to block them, right? So instead of instead of having this high guard where maybe his sparring partners weren't throwing low and maybe he wasn't having to defend low, he could just hang out in his guard. He thought that that was an infinite defense, but your guard is where your defense starts. It's not your entire defense. And Gibb exposed that, right? By throwing constant combinations, moving in and out well. And it's an easy win for Gibb, guys. Like that was an easy dub for our boy Gibb. And I don't want to dive too much into it because it's a very simple fight, right? It was very simple. It was Gibb throwing combinations, landing clean body shots and applying pressure that won in the fight, right? Taylor Holder didn't really do anything. But what did we see here about Gibb's development as a fighter? Well, you know, Gibb was already, he was already okay. It was just that he was using head movement, not when he needed to, just constantly. He was doing this weird crab walk and he was staying within his opponent's range. Frankly, he fixed all those gaps, right? Now he has a couple other gaps to fix because we all have constant improvement that we can do, but he's made the right improvements at the right time to develop as a boxer, right? So if he is able to block straight punches better, is able to, you know, throw straighter punches that land with a bit more power, 
you know, he's a great all-around fighter. And the kid's got infinite heart and infinite cardio. That's why I put him at the top of my tier list. That's why I think that he's a great fighter in this social media sphere. And I think that he's going to do well and keep doing well, right? Because he's got the ability to be good. So thanks a lot, guys. That was another episode of Roundhouse Radio, another breakdown. Make sure to hit that like button. If you like this breakdown, make sure to hit subscribe if you're new. Make sure to follow on Instagram because we get the podcast coming up soon. Should be ready within a week here. And uh, thanks so much for the support, guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. This is another episode of Roundhouse Radio.